This is the greatest student body I've ever been around in my life, and you guys should be really proud of yourselves. How bad? Um, in the spirit of transparency, I just want to admit this is really not my thumb, so I'm going to put it away. Okay. So the, listen, it's not my thumb. Um, so in the spirit of this whole thing and trying to figure out what it is we want to talk about today, I want you to forget about me, forget about everything that I'm saying about what happened to me, because that doesn't really matter. What matters is what happens to you guys. And if something I say today strikes a chord in you, whether it's today or it's in the future, great. I hope you'll remember it. Um, there's something crazy that happened was, we're gonna put pictures up soon? Okay, so you can forget my headshot because I can see my head, it's very large up there. <laughs> it's giant, my goodness. Um, so everything in my life has been you know, exactly what I expected it to be. I worked really hard at everything I ever did in my life. I was the worst wrestler that ever came out of Pennsylvania, but I tried really hard and, you know, I accomplished a few things. And then I moved out to California and I didn't know anybody at all. And I was very fortunate to meet some incredible people who took me under their wing and gave me a chance to pursue my dreams, even though I had no idea what they were. And so over the last, you know, number of years, um, this is me and Ariana, my daughter, who some of you know, uh, riding a horse. My horse in this was somewhat suicidal or angry at me. <laughs> it kept walking towards the edge of a cliff, and I'm like, dude, you've got to move over. Um, but I think they were just hateful that they had to do that in the first place. Um, so anyway, I had, a, I had a really great life. I've had an amazing opportunity to meet and work with and be friends with the greatest people, all the same opportunities most of you have here being at Oaks and being around this community. So after we sold our company and I was on my way to Washington DC for um, a television producers conference and for some reason I wasn't feeling that great and I just did what I always do. You just power through it. It doesn't really matter. You just power through it because you have an obligation and work to do. So I went to Washington and I was pitching, I don't know, like Discovery Channel, some crazy show about a family in Iowa with two heads or something. And it wasn't great, and uh, it wasn't going great, but I started to lose my vision. So I got up in the middle of it, and I wandered out into the street, and I found a cab, and I asked him to take me to the hospital. So the long and the short of it is about two years and six days ago, I died for a little while. And that wasn't as much fun as you might think it is. Um, I was in the... ICU for 71 days. And at first, this is a, you can put this picture up. So I thought I looked great there. Everybody else said I didn't. Um, so I was in a coma for a long time. And when you're in a coma, people think that you're very peaceful and you look like you're sleeping. And that certainly looks peaceful. But I learned a lot during the two and a half to three weeks that I was in a coma because it's the least peaceful place I've ever been or that anybody could ever be. Um, inside of my head at that time, I was being held captive at a farm in Maryland on a bench behind a curtain where I had a small piece of twine over my shoulder. And I'm not talking about like a dream that comes and goes, I'm talking about constant. And you can't, you can't separate this from anything. There is no other reality to you, so it is reality. So I go, I'm laying there on the bench and this family with giant faces and sharpened teeth are keeping me hostage. And every morning they would walk in with a crate and they would open the crate and there would be poisonous snakes in it and they would bite me all day. And they were trying to figure out which snakes would kill their livestock and which ones were not. They never talked to me, only about me. And they gave me the sense that I wasn't the first one there and I wouldn't be the last one there, that at some point I would die and that they would find somebody else. So at a certain point, I started to have labor breathing. I could feel myself drifting away. And as soon as I sort of acknowledged that the end was near, I was transported into what I call a purgatory room. And it was a, it was a room with no, no people, no temperature, nothing in it except for everything was in it. Everybody I've ever known, everything I've ever thought about, everything in my entire life, even the most you know, ridiculous details were all encapsulated in that room, but there was nothing there except for a small drain in the middle 
like you'd find in a locker room shower or like that. And as I started to walk across it, I was confronted by a voice. There's been a lot of debate between the people that I love and care about that I've actually talked to about this, whether that was the voice of God, whether it was a physician you know, who was standing in my room talking to me, whether it was my own conscience. Um, there was a lot of debate about it, but there was no debate about one thing, which is they asked me one very specific question. Do you want to keep doing what you're doing? And I thought, well, I'm being bitten by poisonous snakes, you know, trapped in a farmhouse somewhere. I really don't. So I said no. And somehow this voice knows me. And it says, if you do decide you want to live, it's going to be the hardest, most difficult, painful fight of your life. And so that I understand, because I was the worst wrestler ever. So I understand, like, the hardest fights in your life. So I said yes to that. And immediately I was transported um, through water, through, it got very, very dark water to lighter water. And when I came out at the surface, I woke up from my coma to find, you can put the next picture up, to find that. And I had this on all four of my limbs. And I only show you these pictures briefly because I just want you to know the extent of what we're talking about here because it's important when we get to the idea of what do you do when something happens to you? What do you do when you're getting ready for an opportunity or a challenge? And I just want to set the standard for what we were dealing with a little bit. Those were both my hands and feet were like that. Um, I didn't get to keep any of those things. Um, this is what's left of, of my right hand. And this hand is a hand transplant that I got 90 days ago. Um, <laughs> so, you know, when you get a hand, I'm, I'm the 81st person in the world to get a hand transplant, and I'm also the first person in the world who my doctor, Dr. Azari, who is the most amazing person I've met, um, he prepared it in a certain way so that already I can move it and it looks natural. And I'm about a year and a half ahead of schedule for the way most people receive a hand transplant, for which I'm very grateful. So, thank you. Thank you. So, I, before I got sick, I did everything that I thought was right. I exercised every day, I ate healthy, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I, you know, everything that I thought was a good decision, I did those things. So you wonder to yourself, you know, well, how did this happen? I literally, and just so you know, none of you are going to experience this, so please don't worry about it, like in biology class when they tell you what goes wrong and you all start getting a cough. Um, yeah, none of this is ever gonna happen to you, you're never gonna face it. It's just that I caught what was kind of like flu-like symptoms, and it spun my entire system out of control for some reasons, and my body started to kill itself. And when it did that, um, that's what left me with the residual. But the decision to live and being, I don't know if there's a picture of it, but I was like 180 pounds, which I normally roll around at 225 and feel st strong and healthy. I lost 45 pounds in a very short period of time. I was gone from home at two different major hospitals for five months. And all the day that I woke up from my coma, even though I couldn't talk and I, I couldn't really do anything, I asked them to tie bands to the bottom of my bed so I could take my black hands and see if there's some way I could start lifting again. I don't know why, but I, I find strength in that. I find strength in the accomplishment. And so I started training really hard. And I, at the hospital, I came home. I was in a wheelchair for 10 months, which is so strange to be in a wheelchair when you're nothing but active. And, you know, it's not, it's a really humbling experience, but then you really get to the point where you understand how much your brain and your soul, your mind, your heart, like how much those things are more important than your body. And for somebody who paid attention to all of it for a long time, my body was a big part of it. It was the part that I could see and understand. But what I came to know during this journey and what I'm hoping to share with you guys, the decision that you make about your life really comes down to a couple things, which is, are you want to, do you want to survive your challenges? Do you want to survive your opportunities? Or do you want to attack them? Do you want to be strong in the face of them? The reason I started by telling you that I didn't think that all of you would use this today, but maybe someday you would, is because if you prepare yourselves and you decide that you're going to do more 
than what you think that you should do, if you do one extra push-up, if you, whatever it is that you decide inside of yourself, just between you and you, that you're gonna push yourself a little bit harder to be ready for whatever happens to you, whether it's great, whether it's terrible, whatever happens to you, life is very long, it has a lot of twisting, twists and turns to it, and I find the whole experience you know, amazing. So part of what I think has helped me is that I, have a, I was born with a great attitude. So that's not something I take pride in, it was just part of being born that way. But what I found was that everybody around me spark to that. Everybody that I met, all the doctors, every, every single person in the hospital, I've had 255 doctors so far and spent millions of dollars, they spent millions of dollars saving my life and doing extraordinary things for me, which again, you guys are never gonna face that, but the effort of it is still the same. If you can encourage the people around you to be great with you, if you choose great people to be around you and not the ones that bring you down, Whatever challenges you're going through right now, you have to be fierce in attacking those challenges and you have to put your mind to it. One of the doctors was explaining to me, what's the difference between your mind and your conscious, your mind and your soul, your mind and your heart? He said, everybody's brain looks the same. All of our brains look exactly the same. But our feelings about things, how we look at things, how we view ourselves, those are all different. That's your conscious and your mind. And those are the things that you can use to attack your problems. It's not all about how people see you. In fact, none of it really is about how people see you. And I know it's high school, so that's a bigger thing than it will be as you get older. But it's only really the opportunity that you take to be great in your lives. And maybe finances won't be your challenge. Maybe it will be. I don't know. But I do feel that whatever it is, you can put your mind to it if you train it, just like you train your body, and just like you care about the way that you look, you have to care about your ability to know what's true and deal with it as it is, because wishing and wanting and all those things don't really come out. I didn't wish myself back to health, I worked myself back to health, and I'm proud of it, I'm still in the middle of it, and you know, I'm two years from now, I probably will be out doing amazing things again. I already feel like I'm doing them now, but as I said, this isn't anything to do with what's gonna to happen to you. This is not going to happen to you, but things are going to, and good things and bad things, and I just would like you to be ready and be fierce, and someday when you're feeling challenged, that you'll look back at this and you'll say to yourself, you know what, I, I can push through this. I can do more than I thought I could, and it'll turn out great for you either way. So thanks for having me, I appreciate it.